Hello. Today we're going to continue our discussion of the respiratory system and I wanted to start by reviewing some structures on the model. So yesterday we talked about the upper respiratory system which starts with the nose, the external nose, then air would move into the nasal cavity. It can also circulate through the paranasal sinuses, these circles right here, and then it will travel down the pharynx, the nasopharynx, the oropharynx, the laryngopharynx, and that is the cutoff for the upper respiratory system. So everything below the pharynx is part of the lower respiratory system. Today we're going to talk about the lower respiratory system, starting with the larynx. It's this cartilage right here that's then on top of the trachea. And I want to try to point this out. This tube right here is the esophagus, so that is where food that's headed to our stomachs will go. This tube is the trachea, which ideally is sending air to the lungs. This little flap right here is part of the larynx called the epiglottis. It is able to cover up the trachea to prevent food from getting in it. Now I can switch over to our bottom model and we can see on our other one. So back right here, this cartilage is the larynx. And um, this bone right here is special because it's the only bone in the body that's actually floating. It's not attached to anything. So this is the hyoid bone. This right here would be like if, um, an Adam's apple that you might be able to feel on your chest. So we have the larynx, and then we're going to follow it down into that tube right there is the trachea. So I am going to remove a little bit of our lungs right here, and I'm going to remove our heart, and now we're able to see more of the trachea. So that tube that's going to start right there, and then end up right down there where it branches is called the trachea. It's your windpipe. You can feel it on your throat right here. And then notice how the trachea branches off into two main bronchi. And then each bronchi branches into smaller and smaller branches. So all of these little branches are called our bronchial tree. And notice the little sacs, the alveoli on the end of them. Get him out of the way and pull up some images for you guys. So, focus on the lower respiratory system, starting with the larynx. The top portion of the larynx is made of stratified squamous epithelium, just like the oropharynx and the laryngopharynx, because there could be food there. So, we need that to protect against the abrasion. The bottom part transitions back to our familiar respiratory mucosa, so that pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium with goblet cells. Functions of the larynx. Important, provides a patent airway. Patent means open. The esophagus is like a closed tube, so it's important that we have the larynx and the trachea to, that are able to stay open to transport air. Also, the larynx has the epiglottis that I mentioned, so it functions in sorting air and food into the proper places. That would be air into the trachea and food into the esophagus. And the larynx is, is responsible for voice production because it contains our voice box, our vocal folds. Um, here is pretty much what we saw on the model, reminder of the hyoid bone, and then this top cartilage right here is the larynx. Where it starts looking more like a tube is the trachea. And this is an image I was trying to find. So here we can see the epiglottis is covering the trachea, allowing food to be swallowed down the esophagus. Here the epiglottis is open, so we're not swallowing food, this would be allowing air to come down into the trachea. Sometimes food goes down the wrong pipe. We've all had that experience of choking. Vocal folds. So these um, are a lot of people call them vocal cords, but the technical term is vocal folds. And again, this is the epiglottis. So that's able to kind of move down here and cover it. And then these little things inside of here are the vocal folds. folds when the air comes out, it vibrates them, producing sound. 
I'll recommend this video for a zoom in on the anatomy and then definitely this video to actually they show you the vocal folds while this woman is singing so you can like see what's going on there. You can try it out at home. Okay, now let's move on to the trachea. The trachea is what people call the windpipe. So it is this tube right here that is connecting our larynx to our bronchial tree. And just like the bottom part of the larynx, it has our respiratory mucosa. Remember how the blood vessels had multiple layers? The trachea also has multiple layers. So the mucosa is the innermost layer. It's surrounded by a submucosa of connective tissue and cartilage rings. The cartilage rings are really important because they hold the trachea open. And then an outer layer called the adventitia, just like with the blood vessels, made of connective tissue to hold it all together. Main function of the trachea is to be able to provide an open airway for food. Oh, not for food, for air. Trachea for air. <laughs> Because it has that tissue, it's also able to do some of similar things to the nose and the sinuses, like cleaning, warming, moistening the air. Let's take a look at this diagram. So this right here is the esophagus, the food tube, and then this hole up here is the trachea. Take a close look at the cartilage rings. It's this blue ring right here. Notice that it's not a complete circle. It's just like we call it like a C shape, a C ring of cartilage. And let's think about why that would be important. The esophagus is pretty kind of flat and squished, but when we swallow food, it expands. Like if you could imagine food going down here, it needs this space right here to be able to expand out. If the trachea had circle rings of cartilage, then there would be strong cartilage right here, and we would not be able to swallow our food down our esophagus. Also, here's a picture of the layers of the wall. It makes it a little bit easier to see. So our mucosa with our ciliated columnar cells, the submucosa down here, and then um, outer layer over here, adventitia. Everyone like has heard this, like smoking is bad for you, but like why do people say that? Cilia actually affects, smoking actually affects the cilia. And we need cilia in our trachea because when we get gunk down in our lungs, the cilia actually propel them like up the trachea against gravity into our mouth where we can swallow them. So without cilia, if you smoke and destroy all your cilia, the only way that you can get mucus out of your lungs is by coughing. It's very important that we don't give someone who is a smoker uh, like anti-coughing medicine, like they could die because they need to be able to cough to clear their lungs of mucus. This is a nice view where we can see our larynx up here with the epiglottis. And then this is the trachea. I want to point out this bottom part of the trachea, like it's literally the last cartilage ring before it splits into both bronchi. That is called the carina, and it contains highly sensitive nerve endings that can trigger violent coughing. So normally when we choke, the food, might, well hopefully when we choke, the food is going to be like in our upper trachea and then we can cough it out. But if the food gets down this low, it's about to enter the bronchi. Like, it's basically in the lungs. That is a life-threatening situation. So that's the reason for the carina with its um, extra sensitive nerve endings to be able to, like, you pretty much cough your guts out when that happens. But it's important because we don't want them down the bronchi. Okay, last one for today. The bronchial tree that I was showing you on the passageway how the trachea branches into the bronchi and then smaller and smaller. Bronchioles are less than one millimeter in diameter. And then we get even smaller terminal bronchioles. So the bronchioles at the very end of the bronchial tree, 0.5 millimeters in diameter. Those are the parts that go going to connect to the alveoli. Um, we can we can split the respiratory system into conducting zone and respiratory zone structures. 
Conducting zones simply move air. They conduct air. So starting with the nose, through the paranasal sinuses, through the pharynx, through the larynx, through the trachea, even through the bronchial tree. All of those are conducting zone structures because they literally just move the air around. The respiratory zone begins with the alveoli at the tips of the bronchial tree with the terminal bronchioles. And the respiratory means like gas exchange. So instead of air moving, we're actually exchanging O2 and CO2. Here is a picture. We can see our trachea, our carina, and we can see some of the branching. Smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Some structural changes occur as we move through our bronchial tree. So in the trachea, the cartilage rings are like solid C's, but then they kind of, as you, the further down you go, they move into like, instead of being a ring, just like a little plate or a little piece. And then when we get down into the bronchioles, the one millimeter ones, there's no cartilage, only elastic fibers. Epithelium type changes. So it's pseudostratified down the larger bronchi, but then when we start getting into the smaller ones, it's cuboidal epithelium. Pilia and goblet cells are less common. And the amount of smooth muscle increases. So basically, cartilage decreases, amount of smooth muscle increases. If you have asthma, that could be an overreaction of your smooth muscle, which is causing your airway to narrow. Thank you for listening, and please let me know what questions you have.